four, three. Garrett in the corner, over to the rookie, Silver. Two, one, at the buzzer, he shoots. It's the yes! Yes! Next win! Next win! Next win! I can't believe you guys aren't dressed yet. We couldn't, Mom. We were in the middle of a game. George, would you give me a hand with these guys? Not even dressed yet. They're still playing games. Oh, you're not dressed either. I know, I got winners. Come on, guys, we are late already. Get dressed now. Yeah, what's the matter with you guys? Do we really have to wear ties, Mom? Yes, really. Because remember last time I wore a tie, I got a sore throat for a week. We we'll just have to take our chances. Easy for you to say. Coats, pants, ties, the whole Miguel. Cousin Jacob's arrival is a very important day for your grandmother. And you have to show her some respect. Why do relatives from the old country always come? over to America on weekends, why can't they come during the week so we can at least miss some school out of this? I mean, as a sign of respect. What's the matter? We have to wear ties? This is a list of all the family's favorite places in New York, places Jacob shouldn't miss. Empire State Building, Statue of Liberty, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Jules, we've never been to any of those places. I know, but for us it's different. We live here. Dad's right. I think we should take him to the city. Museum, Central Park, Radio City. I think you should get here first. Why is he late? Oh, he's not late. Oh, I can't read the clock. He's 20 minutes late. Ma, he left Poland a month ago. He went from there to Switzerland, then on to Italy, to Brazil, all the way up through Cuba, Florida, all the way way to New York. Let's give him 20 minutes. He was always late. My mother would send him in the morning to get milk. He would come home at night with a cow. So we won't send him to the store. Maybe he's changed in the meantime. It's been 40 years. Lots happened. You don't have to tell me what happened. I know what happened. That's not what I'm saying. What are you saying? Jules. No. I'm saying he's the last one, that's all. After him, I have no more family over there. No more. And he's late. What's this? I don't know. He just stopped breathing. I, I didn't want to risk loosening his tie. I know how important that is to you. <sighs> Very funny. Can we go out and play, Mom, just till Cousin Jacob gets here? No. You're going to get dirty. You're going to rip your pants. Not a good idea. Can we go out and watch the other kids play? Cheer them on? I'll let them go, Phyllis. I'll tell you what. I'll go down with them. Keep an eye out. Make sure they keep their ties on. All right, you guys. You can go down, but just please be careful. Thanks, Mom. And remember, boys, don't talk to nobody. Don't sit in the car with strangers, and if somebody offers you candy, what do you say? With peanuts or without? 30. Because you're 40. 40. It's tough when he goes first, huh? I know. He never misses. We'll be in college before he misses. At least you guys will. 280. 285. Sunny. Sunny. Sunny, come. You want a candy bar? Sophie Berger House. Jacob? Hershey Bar? Jacob? Sophie. I can't believe it's you. So, you're late. What else is new? My cousin Jacob, who when he was a little boy used to pull my pigtails, but never mind. Welcome. You're with your family again. We are very happy. L'chaim. L'chaim. I would like to say something back, but there are no words. All I can say is you're so beautiful, Sophie. I have to kiss you. If you have to kiss, you kiss. I have to kiss you too, Jules. I'm sorry, I, I can't help it. He's a beautiful man, don't apologize. Come. Sophie, she looks like Rosalie. I remember Rosalie. Rosalie? She's your cousin Esther's daughter by her second husband, Henry. I didn't know there was a cousin Esther. I didn't know there was a second husband. She <laughs> was a dancer, a beautiful dancer, Rosalie. I must kiss you twice, once for Phyllis and once for Rosalie. And. <laughs> I dance over to you in memory of our cousin. Susan is I don't know who you look like, but I love you. Oh. <laughs> don't worry. 
I know in America, no kissing boys, shaking hands only, man to man. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help it. <laughs> Do we look like Cousin Rosalie, too? No, someone else. No, should we eat now? Yes, of course. Eat. I'm ready. Sophie. But I need one more kiss. You won't catch him. Who? The little man who lives inside who turns a light on the north. I don't need to catch him. Just making sure he keeps to do his job. You had the refrigerator, no? For what? There was no food to put in it. All we had was for that day. Well, it's different here, Cousin Jacob. Basically, Grandma likes to keep a year's supply of food in there. I see. And in here, you'll find one of everything Nadie and I have said we liked at some point in our lives. So much food. If you can't find it at the grocery, you'll find it here. Who's this? Betty Cracker. Cracker? Jewish? I don't think so. Although Cracker could be. Not only is she not Jewish, she doesn't even exist. What do you mean? Well, it's just a brand name, that's all. You know, like Uncle Ben, Chef Boyardee. There's no Chef Boyardee? No, nope, just a picture. No, no Betty Cracker? No. Too bad, such a pretty woman, she should exist. Alan, can you give me a hand with this, please? Oh, sure. I'll see you later, Cousin Jacob. Come on up whenever you're ready. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, boy chick. It's a beautiful family, Sophie, like you wrote. We're very lucky, Jacob, and now more lucky we have you here. So many years I thought about this day, what it would be like to be together again. I made a picture in my head. And is this like the picture you made? Exactly. Except in my picture, you were wearing a hat, and Jules had hair. <laughs> you needed to come earlier to see that. <laughs> I just want you to know, I kept a record of the money, every penny you sent me, and I'm going to give it back. Good, because I want it back. Good, because you're getting it back. Good. Now I'm a rich man. I'm happy. Am I really here, Sophie? Or am I dreaming? You know, I can't tell. It's not a dream, darling. You're really here. And everything is going to be all right. You'll see. No, Sophie. Everything will never be all right again. Not really. Yes, it will. You are going to get a job. You are going to meet a woman. You are going to have a wonderful life. Okay, <laughs> cousin. If you say so. I say so. Same old Sophie. Bing, bing. The sound of rifle fire filled the lonely canyon, bouncing off the red rocks and up into the air. The lone ranger... Ranger. Ranger looked everywhere for signs of Tonto. They're good friends, the ranger and Tonto. Very good friends. Tonto saved the ranger, the ranger's life, and now they go everywhere together. We had a man like that in Richan. The village where your grandma and I grew up, he too dressed only in white, and he wore a little mask. Did you call him the Lone Ranger? No, we called him the Meshuganel. We put him in a special place to live. Everybody dressed in white. One cover or two? One. I'll give you two, just in case. Why do you bother asking people? You're going to do what you want anyway. Well, I like to be polite. It's all right, Helen. I sleep in your bed. Oh, sure. Grandma's got lots of relatives. I hardly ever sleep in it. Now, your bath is ready nice and hot the way you like it. Indoor bathrooms. If I'm not out in four hours, I'll be out in five hours. You have the books? Yes. Jackie Robinson and his story. Kill Hodges and his story. Peyton Plays. That one's mine. Uh, it's for school. Ellen. Mm -hmm. So, I'm off to bathe. <laughs> Are you silver? What do you think of Mrs. Skolnick, Jules? I think she's fat. Besides that? There is no besides that. She's just fat. That's all there is. I thought Jacob would be good for her. There's what, the paperweight? She's ten times his size. As a couple. Not if you want him to stay here in America. One look at Skolnick, he books passage back to Poland. What about Abramovich? Abramovich looks good, but only next to Skolnick. Phyllis, help me. I'm staying out of this, Ma. Fine. I'll do it myself. Kaminsky, I think that's the one. Sophie, I don't think you should be doing this. Jacob is a very handsome man. He'll find his own woman. If he wants, 
when he wants. Why rush? Well, I want him to be happy, that's all. But this man's been through, no one should know from it. He should have a life. God, when you look at him, you can't even imagine. To lose your wife, to lose two young boys, it's just... I don't know. Our boys have been asking, you know, about Jacob, the war, his family. How do you want to tell them? Tell them what? About Jacob. They don't need to know. Ma, they're just boys. What do they need to know from concentration camps, from wars? Sophie. All they need to know is that their cousin is here, and we love him, and he's going to be happy. With Kaminsky. He's going to have a wonderful life. I will see to that. <laughs> what up, play, Brooklyn? I can't believe how beautiful it is. Do you know Abbott's Field Jewels with the baseball? Prospect Park with the prospecting. Next week, we're riding horses on the board ball. No, we're roller skating on the board We're going horseback riding on Ocean Parkway. Better. See you later, Cousin Jacob. Bye, boys. So, you're having fun? Fun? This is the life. And I've made a big decision about my future. What? I'm going into fifth grade with Nate Public School 205. He told me all about it. I wouldn't miss it. Oh, God. No! Still on the bike, Trombonik. We have an appointment. I forgot. What else is new? Go get changed. I'll wait for you. I need a kiss first. No more kissing. Enough already. Just one. No. Yes. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Ah, Sophie's at it again. So, who's she got for Jacob meeting this time? I think he's meeting Mrs. Kaminsky, God help you. Well, what's wrong with Mrs. Kaminsky? Phyllis, she's buried two husbands. And she was a very devoted wife to both. She was grief-stricken at Walter's funeral. I didn't see her jump in there with him. So, what's the story with Jacob's family? What story? Well, I mean, didn't he have a family? He mentioned a son. Two sons. So... What happened to them? It was before you were born, Bojcik. I mean, I know what kind of stuff happened in the war. Was that it? Some things are best left behind. So, let's leave them. You don't want to tell me? No, it's not that. So what is it? We just don't want to tell you. Oh. <laughs> Jacob, very handsome. My handsome fella, what can I do? <laughs> Disappointment, Sophie. She's a friend of yours. That's right. She's a beautiful girl. I've told her all about you. She can't wait to meet you. I'm very excited. Whoopi. So we'll go pass her on the street for pretend for shopping. So she doesn't know we're coming. Oh, she knows all right. So she knows we're pretending. That's right. What will she be doing? Shopping. Really shopping? Pretending. So everybody's pretending. Naturally. Why can't we just have an appointment? It wouldn't be right. Sophie! Sophie! Hello, Sophie. I was just on my way out to shop. So were we. And this is? This is my cousin Jacob. He just came to America. So this is Jacob. Hello. I'm shopping. I'm Esther Kaminsky. Sophie has told me so much about you. What's to tell? But she never said you were so handsome. Mrs., please, you make me blush. <laughs> oh, I wish I could stay and chat, Sophie, but I'm meeting Ruthie at the store. I own a small business, small but successful. What can I tell you? It brings in plenty of money but takes no time. So my days, my nights are free for other things. <laughs> Run along, dear. We don't want to keep you. Oh, it was so nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm going shopping now. Us too. 
Do you want to? If you want. No, too pushy. We'll meet someone new tomorrow. Sophie, how, how many women will we meet? As many as it takes. Thanks for what? To find the right one for you. There is only one woman for me. You know that. Hmm. I am Anna's husband. Anna is my wife. She will always be. But Jack, you're here now. In America now. You can begin again. A whole new life. You have given me so much. I can never repay you. But one thing you cannot give me is a whole new life. Hey, Sid. How come families keep so many secrets from each other? That's your job. That'll be 15 cents. So it's not just my family, huh? Your family has secrets, too? Oh, sure. In my family, there was nothing but secrets. I didn't even know until I was 15 that my Uncle Maya was not Uncle Maya, but was, in fact, Aunt Marjorie. Well, that must have been a shock. It was worse for his kids. You want my opinion? It's better to be open and honest about everything. The truth may be painful, but in a family, the truth is always better than keeping dark secrets and letting them fester. Yeah, well, everybody's keeping a big secret from me over at my house. Tremendous mistake. What's your secret? Something about my cousin Jacob and what happened to his family in the war. That's none of your business. And you quit poking your nose around where it's not wanted. Hi, Jacob. Ellen. Oh, I I'm sorry. Did I... No, no. No, I was just waiting for the sunset. We have beautiful sunsets in Brooklyn. We do? Yes. Come. Look. What do you see? See Weinberg's drugstore. Soon you'll see how the sun makes Brooklyn golden every night. I never really noticed it before. You must always notice the sunset, Ella. Everyone is precious. I never miss a sunset. Do you know why? Jacob, I bought the tea you like. Hello, Sophie. Hello, darling. Hi, Grandma. I'll make you some. How old are you, Ellen? Fifteen. Not possible. My son, Joseph, was fifteen. Jacob. A handsome boy like you. Troublemaker, too. It's true. That's enough. That's enough, Jacob. Here, we have cake, too. I'm telling Ellen about his cousin. Go on, Jacob, please. I remember one day he skipped school to go to a soccer match. Have you ever done that, Ellen? To go to a baseball game once, yeah. Did you get in trouble? Well, sure. Did Joseph? Well, he should have. But I skipped work to take him to the game, so... <laughs> Okay, that's enough stories about the olden days Ellen's got homework, yes? No. Well, then it's dinner time. No, it's not, Grandma. Well, then it's snack time. Grandma! I don't want you talking to Jacob about these things. Why not? Because it's not healthy. The past. Talk about the future. Sophie, the boy should know. He should know what? Unhappiness? He should know suffering? He's a boy, Jacob. No more talk. The past is gone. You're here now. You will be happy. I will make you happy. You have made me happy, Sophie, but you can't change what happened. Why must you talk like this? He's old enough to know, Sophie. Old enough to know my pain. Our pain, isn't he? Why do you never miss the sunset, Jacob? For two years, I never saw the sunset, Ellen. During the war? I was in Treblinka, Ellen. Do you know what that was? I can't stand it, Jacob. I just can't stand it. It's difficult for your grandma to see me, Ellen. She sees me, she sees my wife, Anna, my boys, Joseph and David, and so many others. I begged you in the letters. I said, come, Bubula, come now, come. Anna wouldn't leave her parents behind. I should have come to you then, to Anna. Make her come. It was my fault. No. I should have been there with you. You should never have been left alone. Sophie. I should have done something, something. I should have done something. There was nothing you could do. Sophie. There was nothing anyone could do. The last time I saw my family, Joseph was exactly your age, 15. 
David was alive. The police had picked me up at work and were taking me back to the apartment. Anna was smart and fearless. She knew that if I was late, something must be wrong. She was waiting outside. My beautiful wife and my two boys, Joseph and David. And just as we had planned, we made believe we didn't know each other. As they were taking me up the stairs, I accidentally bumped into Joseph. Excuse me, I said. He turned away without a word, as I had taught him he must do. I never saw any of them again. Sun makes Brooklyn golden every night. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 